welcome to a design breakdown on my Insurgency Sandstorm Checkpoint map, Valley. Checkpoint is a PvE style game mode where a group of players complete mission based objectives such as capturing and defending a key territory or destroying a supply cache against challenging enemy AI. Each successful objective will respawn for any teammates who were eliminated throughout the round, so it's a one life only round. The idea of the level was to funnel players linearly and progressively whilst also offering them one of three paths to avoid choke point style scenarios. This was done as the gameplay for checkpoint maps is scripted in terms of AI and spawn positions, ambush nodes and player respawn waves, therefore creating a solid linear level flow is essential for this type of scripted gameplay. The map features a set of seven objectives, three of which are supply caches. The difference between them and uh, regular flag captures is that they can be destroyed by explosives, therefore these have been placed in more open areas to account for the use of player loadouts, so they can use stuff like rocket launchers and Molotov cocktails to destroy these key objectives, hence having them in more open areas will allow players to use these more innovative strategies. From my original plans, many things have changed in the level. Notably, the map scale has been greatly reduced, as I originally made the map way too big, and players um, in the original testing phase, they spent way too long um, running between each objective. Um, so I reduced the distance between them and brought all the objectives closer together, and this has uh, led to more closer engagements and more tightly packed gameplay. Another benefit of bringing all the objectives together is that it reduces the asset density across the whole map, meaning assets can be focused on being placed close to the objectives if they are close together, improving the level's performance as the assets will no longer be scattered throughout the whole map. The level functions in a split linear fashion with one primary route to the objective that then branches off into two or three alternate subpaths to allow players to flank and use cover while assaulting these objectives. This allows players to funnel the AI down paths during counter-attack phases, but avoids the AI being able to do the same to the player, as this will be very important as the player only has one life respawn, so it's important that each death that they have feels justified and uh, worth it, because uh, if not it will lead to frustration and lack of enjoyment within the level. Spawns have been placed slightly behind the, each objective for them to avoid being directly uh, spawned on top of retreating enemies, but also give players a chance to regroup and run back and change their loadouts in the safety if they wish to do so. Roads and walls were placed to help direct player vision towards objectives via the use of leading lines theory. So when I didn't want players to go in a certain direction, I tended to block it off or curve the road around to direct their vision around. And I either did that with buildings or ruined vehicles. Um, and when I did that, I tried to build upon the environmental storytelling by adding uh, debris, by adding fires and all that kind of stuff to help make it feel um, justified in the world. Uh, AI has been placed via the use of the Insurgency Sandstorms SDK's cover nodes in key areas which essentially leads to AI being spawned randomly uh, based on a set priority so that each engagement and each replay of the map will result in a different assortment of AI positions meaning that players will have to simply not just look where they remember the AI being, but also have to think about where they could be, making for a more challenging and rewarding gameplay loop. All primary capture objectives have been placed under cover. Um, these are all of the capture the flag zones. This is to help mitigate the um, the other mechanics, which are the enemy AI commanders, uh, same as the friendly commanders, can call in artillery support. So if you're in a big open area and someone calls in artillery support, then it could result in a potential team wipe, so this isn't fun, obviously. So I've added a lot of cover around these objectives so that if you are caught out in these own areas, then it is kind of your own fault. Lighting has been baked onto two separate levels for both the daytime version and the nighttime version of the map, as each comes with unique equipment items and AI behavior. Other levels such as UI, AI assets, game mode assets and backdrop assets have all been added as sub-levels in order to increase performance and keep everything nice and organized as per the Insurgency Mod IO's uh, guidance. In order to optimize the performance of the game, I merged many static actors together so they would be instanced as a single mesh and reduce the amount of draw calls, thus increasing the performance, and also baking the lighting as everything is set to static. 
so that that way there's no dynamic cooking of lights on the fly which would greatly reduce performance. I hope you've enjoyed the design breakdown of my Insurgency Sandstorm map. I have some videos showcasing level gameplay in the section below.